I like trains. Well, Rail fans, it's that time of year again, an end of the year special video to close out the old year and to bring in the new year. I cannot believe that today is already the last day of 2023, and I'm sure you can't either. Fortunately for all of you, I decided to keep my tradition of uploading an end of the year special video going in 2023, which is the third year in a row that I have done this. Those of you who have been watching my videos since 2020 may remember the compilation videos I posted towards the end of that year featuring some of my coolest catches. While I enjoy creating those videos, I never considered posting a special one for the entirety of 2020. After all, I was only a few months into my YouTube career, even though I'm only doing this as a hobby and not a job, and I lack the creativity that I have since gained as time has gone on, so I guess that's what's to blame for the absence of a 2020 end of the year video. However, after catching several more trains in 2021, many of which were special, I got the idea of posting a longer compilation covering the whole year, and after finishing that year's video, I was inspired to keep the tradition going for 2022 and beyond. Now, 2021's video was definitely something I was proud of creating, as it featured my top 25 catches of the year with five honorable mentions. But I really feel like I could have shortened it a bit, as it was a whole hour and 30 minutes long. I don't even think I could sit in front of a device to watch a 90 minute video about trains. For those of you who actually watched my entire 2021 compilation, huge, and I mean huge, props to you. However, I completely understand if many of you skipped around throughout it. Now in my defense, I did at least include chapters for each part of the video, but I still feel bad for making the video that lengthy. Anyways. I tried to learn from what I created in 2021 and apply it to 2022's video, which was much shorter, at around 22 minutes long. Rather than leaving out certain trains that may have not made the top 25 cut, I decided to include all of my best catches for that year and created a long slideshow of pictures featuring them. I also added chapters in the description going month by month, almost like a timeline so that viewers could see the progression of my rail fanning adventures throughout 2022. So you're probably wondering what I have uploaded for 2023. Well, I decided to combine the ideas from 2021 and 2022's videos into this one. 2023's end of the year special will feature my best catch from each month of 2023. Now, like 2021, there will be five honorable mentions that will be included later on in this video. Note that the trains chosen have nothing to do with which month they were in, meaning a certain month may have multiple trains as honorable mentions. Like 2022, the video will act like a timeline, beginning in January and ending in December. One last thing to mention is that like 2021 and 2022, 2023's video will feature some spoilers meaning there will be trains in this compilation I have yet to upload onto my YouTube channel as full videos. However, some have been uploaded in the past as shorts, so you may or may not recognize a few of the spoilers. Anyways, that is all I have for the intro. I hope you are having a great holiday break out there, and I hope you all enjoyed this end of the year special video featuring my top catches from each month of the year 2023. Sit back, Relax and enjoy this video. My best catch of January 2023 occurred on January 16th, which was a short chase from West Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Wampum, Pennsylvania on the CSX Pittsburgh subdivision. This train was CSX loaded ethanol train B769 bound for Curtis Bay Yard in Baltimore, Maryland. This B769 was led by a pair of foreign EMD SD70 aces. The leader was Kansas City Southern 4196, and trailing second was BNSF 8520. This was the first time I had ever caught a KCS locomotive lead a train, and I was very glad that it was an EMD. 
This was easily one of the coolest lash-ups I caught on a train in the year of 2023, and it was well-deserving of a spot in this compilation. Here is a shot of B-769 flying through Wampum at track speed. February's best catch ironically occurred on February 1st. This was another train chase from Ravenna, Ohio to Newcastle, Pennsylvania on the CSX Newcastle subdivision. The train was CSX empty pipe train B520, which terminates in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. However, B520's consist is dropped in Girard, Ohio, and from there, the locomotives head east light power to Newcastle. This particular B520 was also being led by a pair of foreign invaders, both courtesy of Union Pacific. Leading this empty pipe train was UP 1982, an EMD SD70 Ace, and the Missouri Pacific, or MOPAC, heritage unit. This was the second Union Pacific heritage unit I have ever seen, and the first leading. You can check out the other UP Heritage unit I caught in 2021's end-of-the-year compilation, as it was number two on the list. The trailing locomotive on B520 was also neat, UP 6305, a GE AC44CW. This locomotive is formerly Southern Pacific. Now, if 6305 still wore its SP paint scheme, this train would be a nominee for one of the best catches in total in 2023. Anyways, here is a clip of B520 flying through Ravenna hours before the break of dawn. March's top catch occurred on March 4th. Like January and February, this featured train was also chased. 2023 was a big step forward for me for rail fanning in terms of chasing trains, as I even started chasing ones of Class 1 railroads. Anyways, this chase took place from Wellsville, Ohio to Saline Township, Ohio on the Norfolk Southern Cleveland Line, also known as the Bayard Branch. This line is especially neat because it consists of old Pennsylvania Railroad position light signals, as pictured right there. The line sees four daily trains a day, two locals and two trash trains, one of each eastbound and the other westbound. However, when the massive train derailment and explosion occurred in East Palestine, Ohio, on the NS Fort Wayne line in early February 2023, Norfolk Southern rerouted many of their trains down the Bader Branch. On this day, I caught many of those reroutes past the old Penzi signals on this line. Feel free to check those videos out in my Norfolk Southern Cleveland Line playlist. 
Anyways, the train featured in this part of the video was NSC65, the daily local mixed freight train that runs westbound to Mingo Junction, Ohio. The reason why this train is featured in this video is because of its lead locomotive, NS911, an EMD SD60E, and the Honoring First Responders Special Unit. It was very neat to see this locomotive lead a train down the Bayard Branch in perfect lighting. Now, let's take a look at the shot I got of C-65 passing under State Route 7 in Saline Township with both EMD SD-60Es in Notch 8. April's best catch occurred on April 2nd in a location that I had never been to before this day, Vandergrift, Pennsylvania on the Norfolk Southern Connema Line. The train was NS Manifest Train 10K, bound for Allentown, Pennsylvania. 10K was led by EMD SD-78's 1072, the Illinois Terminal Heritage Unit. This was the second time I have seen this heritage unit lead, the first being in 2021. This unit is also featured in 2021's end of the year special. Here is the video I got of NS1072 passing Somerset International Coal Facility in Vandergrift at sunset. Now May was arguably one of my best rail fading months in 2023, as we may see another train from this month for honorable mentions. This month's top catch occurred on May 25th in Elkridge, Maryland at the Dorsey Mark Station on the CSX Capital Subdivision. The train was CSX Loaded Autorack Train M214. Bound for Curtis Bay Yard in Baltimore, Maryland, this M214 was being led entirely by foreign power. Leading was Union Pacific 8759, an EMD SD-70 Ace, and trailing was Norfolk Southern 9938, a GE C40-9W. Both of these companies' locomotives rarely go east of Cumberland on CSX, so this was quite a special catch. Here is a video of M214 flying past Dorsey Station in near-perfect morning light. You think May was good? Well, June was arguably even better. Like February, June's top catch occurred on the first of the month. On June 1st, 2023, I went on yet another train chasing adventure, this time from Berryville, Virginia to Stanley, Virginia on the Norfolk Southern Hagerstown Line and Shenandoah Valley. On this day, Norfolk Southern Ferry Move Train 958 rolled southbound down the H-Line, transporting Norfolk and Western's ever-famous 484 J-Class steam locomotive 611 to Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke is where the Queen of Steam currently rests, although it ran multiple excursions along the Buckingham Branch Railroad in October before returning back home. 
The chase was super neat because it was in perfect lighting and we caught this train passing an old NNW CPL signal as well as crossing a trestle. Feel free to check out the full video of this chase in my train chases playlist on my channel. Anyways, let's take a look at NS 958 with the 611 Class J crossing a trestle in Stanley featuring 611's whistle. In July 2023, I got a new phone, upgrading from a Samsung S20 FE to a Samsung S23 Plus. I must admit that this new phone has a much improved camera, and I quickly fell in love with the new 108060 quality. This phone's camera setting has a much better zoom, a stronger speaker, and picks up night light like no other. This month will feature the first train in the compilation that I filmed with this new phone. Anyways, on July 21st, 2023, I set up shop in Elk Ridge, Maryland again at Dorsey Mark Station on the CSX Capital Subdivision to catch CSX Intermodal and Tropicana Juice Train IO31 heading westbound on its way to Jacksonville, Florida. A few weeks prior to this catch, IO31 and IO32 began having Tropicana Juice cars on their trains. Beforehand, the cars were on trains M300 and M301. On this day, IO31 was being led by one of CSX's new heritage units that were first introduced in early June. The lead locomotive on this train was CSX GE ES44 AC-H 1982, formerly 3066, this locomotive is CSX's Seaboard System Heritage Unit. This was the third newest of CSX's new Heritage Units, and since this catch, a few more have came out, and there are still many yet to come. 1982 is not the only Heritage Unit I have seen on CSX, but I still have a ways to go before I catch them all. Old Main Productions, on the other hand, has seen many more CSX Heritage Units than I have. Be sure to check out those videos on his channel if you have not yet. Anyways, here is my video of CSX's Seaboard System 1982 leading IO31 westbound through Dorsey Station. Well, we have reached the first of the spoilers in this video. In August of 2023, I did not catch a whole lot of special trains, but the ones I did see were neat. This month will feature two different catches of the Bessemer and Lake Erie miscellaneous train L518 on Canadian National's Bessemer subdivision. On August 24th, CN L518 was seen in Forestville, Pennsylvania crossing Harmony Road with EMD SD38AC868 leading and EMD SD40T-3905 trailing. Three days later, on August 27th, I caught the MISC heading northbound in Branchton, Pennsylvania at the McCandless Road crossing. This train was led by a pair of EMD SD38s. 
EMD SD38 862 leading and EMD SD38 AC 868 trailing. While these may just seem like two innocent catches of old Bessemer power, the real reason as to why these trains are featured in this month will be revealed in the September portion. Now let's take a look at both catches from August 24th and 27th. Well, I have some bad news to report. The catches of Bessemer Power in August were bittersweet as it was potentially the last time I would ever catch EMD SD38AC 868 on home rails. On September 20th, BNLE 868 was placed on the MISC dead in tow to Butler where it would be dropped off in exchange for the Buffalo and Pittsburgh Railroad meaning it would leave the Bessemer property for the very first time in its 52 years of existence. Four days later, on September 24th, the B&P picked up 868 on one of their trains, BTRI, which runs from Butler, Pennsylvania to Riker, Pennsylvania. On this day, I ended up chasing BTRI from Butler, Pennsylvania to Cohensville, Pennsylvania. However, the reason why BTRI is in this video is not so much about 868 as it is the BNP itself. Around this time, Buffalo and Pittsburgh was in the process of replacing all six actual EMDs with XBNSF GE-9s. While in the process, BNP had no other choice but to temporarily use some of their six actual EMDs that they would normally not use before all Dash 9s arrived. One of those six actual EMDs was BNP EMD SD60M 3892. This locomotive is what is known as a triclops, having lower number boards and having three split windows in the front of the cab. This was the first triclops locomotive I had ever seen, and it may end up being the only one, so I was very glad to see this lead. Also, this train was powered by nothing but six axle EMDs a sight that is almost impossible to see now on this railroad. I cannot wait to put the full chase of this video together for you all to enjoy. It will come out within the first three months of 2024. Anyways, as for 868, Buffalo and Pittsburgh train RISI, Riker to Salamanca, would eventually pick it up after dropping it off from BTRI. 868's eventual destination is Dansville, New York, at the AMP locomotive shops. 868 was sent there to get a complete overhaul. It is unknown as to when or if 868 will ever return to the Bessemer property, but if it doesn't, I am very glad that I was able to catch it as much as I did before it was too late. Now let's take a look at one of the shots of BTRI, which is at Clearfield Road in Fennelton, Pennsylvania.
Well, sometimes life brings silver linings to somber events. October's best train of 2023 features the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad again, except there is a major twist. On October 18th, in Calvin Yard in Butler, Pennsylvania, on Canadian National's Bessemer subdivision, CN L518 is featured working the yard with locomotives 862 and 905. This train was quite interesting because not only was it filmed in beautiful fall foliage, but the L518 on this day picked up a pair of locomotives in Butler that were recently dropped off from the Buffalo and Pittsburgh Railroad. One of the locomotives was CN EMD SD70M 2 8827, returning to the property to handle ore duties. The other, possibly the biggest twist on the BNLE Railroad in a few years, was EMD SD38 2 878. 878 officially returned home on this day for the first time since early 2021, as it currently serves as 868's replacement. I am unsure how long 878 will remain on the Bessemer property, but until it leaves again, if it does, I will try to catch it as many times as possible. While I am sad that 868 is gone for now, I am very excited to have the opportunity to catch a new orange Bessemer locomotive on home rails. Now one more thing before I show the video, on November 18th, 2023, exactly a month after this, locomotive 905 was sent on the misc dead in tow and was dropped off in Calvin Yard just like 868 in September. A few days later, 905 officially left the property, also bound for Dansville, New York. I have a hunch that the BNLE is temporarily sending all their old locomotives away for an overhaul, so perhaps 862 is next? However, nothing can ever be assumed on the railroad, especially on the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad, so we will just have to wait and see what happens. Anyways, here is the video of this train with locomotives 862, 905, 8827, and 878 departing Calvin Yard. Before we continue on with November and December, here are five honorable mentions. Remember that some of these selections may occur in the same month. Also, in case you're wondering, these honorable mentions are in order, starting with the most special train and ending with the train that just barely made the cut. Anyways, here they are and I hope you enjoy this bonus footage. Our first honorable mention comes from the month of January. On January 23rd, I ended up chasing Canadian National Ore Train U702 on the CN Bessemer subdivision, which was led by Bessemer and Lake Erie locomotives 905 and 868. In the morning, I caught the power running southbound light power in Grove City, Pennsylvania at the South Center Street crossing, and then a few hours later, I chased a train with ore empties from Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, back to the same crossing in Grove City. This train was the first honorable mention in this compilation for a few reasons. First, because of the snowy scenery, which is pretty appropriate to share around this time of year, and also because this was the last time Bessemer power was used on the ore train to this date, and an event like this may never happen again. If it doesn't, I am very glad to have caught BNLE locomotives on the ore trains as much as I did. Now, let's take a look at one of the clips from this chase as 868 leads 905 and 58 ore hoppers past Halston Road.
Our second honorable mention is from June, specifically on June 25th. On this day, I chased CSX loaded military train S590 bound for Mooresville, Pennsylvania, from Point of Rocks, Maryland to Mount Airy, Maryland, as this train took the old main line. What made this chase neat was that the train was powered by two Ford and locomotives, Kansas City Southern 4159 and EMD SD70 Ace, and Union Pacific 7859, a GE AC45 CCTE. This was the first time I had ever seen KCS or UP Power on the old main, and to see them both on the same train, especially one hauling military vehicles, was quite neat. Also, this was filmed months after Kansas City Southern merged with Canadian Pacific to form CPKC, so technically 4159 was also a fallen flag leader. Now let's take a look at S590 thundering up the grade at East Plain in Mount Airy. Honorable Mention 3 comes from the month of February. On February 12th, CSX Manifest train M331 passed westbound through Wampum, Pennsylvania on the CSX Pittsburgh subdivision. While the first two locomotives were CSX, although the second unit was in YN2 paint, the third and fourth locomotives are what really stood out. Trailing third was a Union Pacific EMD SD70M numbered 4801, and trailing fourth was Kansas City Southern 4548, a GE AC44CW in the Grey Ghost paint scheme. M331 also consisted of Bradley AFV military vehicles at the front of the train, which added to this awesome catch. Here is the video I got of M331 heading westbound through Wampum.
second. I think we got some military loads on this train. Oh my gosh, look at these. Bradley AFDs. Holy cow. Tell you what, if the KCS Grey Ghost was leading this train, this would be the catch of the year. Like honorable mention two, honorable mention four also comes from June, on June 22nd. On this day, I set up shop at the Caperton Station in Martinsburg, West Virginia on the CSX Cumberland subdivision to catch CSX Manifest train M415. Bound for Rocky Mount, North Carolina, this train had many goodies on it. Leading this train was CSX GEES44AC-H 1973 XCSX 3049, the Chessie System Heritage Unit. This was the first heritage unit I caught on CSX, and it was also the first train that CSX 1973 led as a heritage unit. 1973 was not the only cool part of this train, however, as trailing second was an old GE-8 in the YN2 scheme, number 7848. M415 also had a few fallen flags, both of which were quite old, a Conrail boxcar and an Illinois Central boxcar. Both of these pieces of rolling stock are very difficult to find these days, so I was delighted to see them on this train. Now let's take a look at my catch of CSX M415 flying through Martinsburg. And a dash eight trailing. Oh, DPU. DS40 DC. Oh, New York Central. Whoa, that's rare. Whoa, that's old as anything. Ooh. Oh, Illinois Central, yep. It did have the IC pass right there. Our fifth and final honorable mention comes from the month of May on May 15th. On this day, I and a few friends headed to Old Mill Bottom Road in Mount Airy, Maryland on the CSX Old Maid Line subdivision at night. Here, we caught CSX intermodal train I-137 bound for Bedford Park, Illinois. This I-137 was led by a pair of CSX GEs, but what made this catch special was the third and fourth locomotives. Trailing third on this train was CSX EMD SD40-2 8247. This is one of just three SD40-2s on CSX still wearing its YN2 colors, and one of six EMDs in total. Not to mention that 8247 was online on this train too. The fourth locomotive was arguably even cooler than 8247, CSX 8619, and EMD SD50-3. 8619 is one of the only SD50 variants that survived CSX's implementation of precision scheduled railroading, also known as PSR. To see these two specific locomotives on a CSX train in the present day is quite rare, so I could not resist putting this train into the compilation. Now if 8247 or 8619 were leading this I-137, then it would have absolutely represented May for this month's best catch. Anyways, here's a video of I-137 passing through Mount Airy at night.
both facing east. November's best catch occurred on November 16th, a chase from Meadville, Pennsylvania to Oil City, Pennsylvania. This was on a railroad I had yet to discover before this day, the Western New York and Pennsylvania Railroad, or WNYP for short. The WNYP runs two trains a week out of Meadville, both symboled ME1. On Tuesdays, the train runs all the way to Falconer, New York, and on Thursdays, it runs to Oil City, Pennsylvania. Since November 16th was a Thursday, the train ran the Oil City job. What makes this railroad so appealing is the locomotives that are used for road power, old Alco C430s. This was the first time I ever saw Alco locomotives in general, so it was very cool to see them in action. Unfortunately, these Alcos will not last much longer on the WNYP Railroad as they violate EPA regulations. Soon enough, they will be replaced by EMD GP38s. Of course, this is what motivated me to go for the Alcos now before it's too late, and I have zero regrets doing so. Anyways, leading this ME1 was Locomotive 432, built in November 1967 as New York Central 2054, and trailing was Locomotive 430, built in November 1967 as New York Central 2050. Like my September Buffalo and Pittsburgh chase, I am extremely excited to put this chase video together in the future. Stay tuned in the next few months! For now, here is a clip of ME1 passing through Utica, Pennsylvania, crossing 3rd Street. Last but not least, December's best catch occurred on December 15th at the Newport Road Crossing in Woodbine, Maryland on the CSX Old Main Line subdivision. The train was CSX Empty Ethanol Train B774, which was headed for Clearing Yard in Chicago, Illinois, where it would interchange with Canadian National. This B774 had quite a neat locomotive lash-up. Leading was Norfolk Southern EMD SD70 Ace 1157. Trailing second was Wells Fargo, or WFRX for short, EMD SD70 Mac 8914, formerly owned by BNSF. Trailing third was BNSF GEES 44 C4 8048. This was definitely not something you see every day, especially in the Maryland area, much less the old main line, which many of you know is my favorite railroad subdivision. It warmed my heart on this cold December morning to catch a train like this. Also, there were several other crazy trains that I caught in Maryland in December of 2023, and I cannot wait to upload them to my channel in mid-2024. However, nothing came close to beating this train in my opinion. Now, let's take a look at my catch of CSX B774 with NS, WFRX, and BNSF power heading westbound through downtown Woodbine with the engineer giving an awesome K5 LLA horn show for the last train in this video. Enjoy!
awesome. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I must say that selecting these top trains was far from easy, but I feel content with what I chose for this compilation. There were some trains that just barely missed the cut, and I almost feel bad for not including them here. The good news is that these near misses that were filmed from August to December will be posted as future videos in the year 2024. Feel free to let me know in the comments section if you agree with my selections, or if you suggest that certain trains should have replaced others. I am all open to hearing your opinions. Anyways, I cannot wait to continue my YouTube and rail fanning journey in 2024 as I am excited to see what the future holds. One last thing before I go, thank you all so much for your support on this channel. It is much appreciated and I cannot believe that I have already surpassed 600 subscribers. I couldn't have done this without you. Well, I believe that's a wrap for this video and for the year. This is the old man guy signing off for one last time in 2023. Happy New Year, and I will see you all in 2024.